Good morning. Good morning and Merry Christmas. I pray that your day yesterday was meaningful and that as we come into this space together this morning, you feel the hope, peace, joy, and love of Christ with you. Know that wherever you are joining from this morning, you are welcome just as you are. For that is how God brings us into their arms, just as we are. We're glad that you are worshiping with us this morning. We have a wonderful service of lessons and carols this morning, led especially by our chancel choir. It is going to be a joyful time, and we're glad that you're here. Will you join me in our prayer of invocation as we enter worship? Emmanuel, God who is with us. Once again, you have broken into this world. A bright light has come to dwell with us, to be with us, to shine on us and within us. We are grateful, God, for the gift of your son, Jesus. We are grateful for the humble birth of one who would transform the world. This morning, as we gather, as we sing and rejoice and hear the story of God's people, may you cultivate within us a Christmas spirit that can shine out to all who we encounter. Move among us, bring us together as one body. Let this worship experience show us, tell us, stir within us what we need this morning. And may it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ears. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We'll now have Alice Mulberry come forward to read our first lesson. Our first reading for today is taken from the book of Genesis, chapter 1 verses one to five. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep and the spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. God saw that the light was good and he separated the light from the darkness. God, God called the light day and the darkness he called night. And there was evening and there was morning the first day. Amen. A word of creation. Let's continue our opening of worship, joining together in the hymn, O Come All Ye Faithful. I invite you to sing joyfully wherever you are.
Amen. What beautiful sounds coming from our sanctuary. Thank you, choir. As all can see, both Pastor Sarah and I are both remote on Zoom this morning. Grateful to God for the technology that allows us to do this so that all can be safe this morning. So we are at the moment of passing the peace. Um, we say, and I ask that you think seriously about these words that we share, this hope that we have for one another, that we have the peace of Christ in such trying and challenging times. Say it with your heart, say it with meaning. Those who are on Zoom, let us go first. Unmute, make a joyful noise and say to those in the sanctuary, the peace of Christ be with you. The peace, peace of Christ, Christ, Christ be with you. Peace of Christ be with you. Peace of Christ be with you and those in the sanctuary. <laughs> Can you return that sentiment to us? And also with you. <laughs> Amen. We can't hear you. I'm assuming you said it. <laughs> God bless you all on this glorious day. Lesson two, Covenant, will be read by Anna York. I'm reading from Genesis 9, verses 8 through 17, and I'm reading from the New International Version. Then God said to Noah, and to his sons with him. I now establish my covenant with you and your descendants after you and with every living creature that was with you, the birds, the livestock, and all the wild animals, all those that came out of the ark with you, and every living creature on the earth. I establish my covenant with you. Never again will all life be destroyed by the waters of a flood. Never again will there be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, this is the sign of the covenant I am making between me and you and every living creature with you. A covenant for all generations to come. I have set my rainbow in the cloud. And it will be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. Whenever I bring clouds over the earth and the rainbow appears in the clouds, I will remember my covenant between me and you and all living creatures of every kind. Never again will the waters become a flood to destroy all life. Whenever the rainbow appears in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and all living creatures of every kind on the earth. So God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant I have established between me and all life on the earth. May the Lord bless the reading. And all the people said, Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm.
Amen. I'm honored to read the prophecy, Isaiah chapter 9, verses 1 through 7. But there will be no gloom for those who were in anguish. In the former time, he brought into contempt the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the latter time, he will make glorious the way of the sea, the land beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in the land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when divide, dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of the oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders and he is named Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. The choir will sing, hark the herald angels sing, join in with them as they sing this wonderful hymn of the season.
A reading from Isaiah 11, 1 through 9 of the New Revised Standard Version on the vision of mutual kingship in God's kingdom. A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips, he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb. The leopard shall lie down with the kid. The calf and the lion and fatling together and the little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze. Their young shall lie down together and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp and the winged child shall put his hand on the adder stem. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. A reading on faith. Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 38. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came to her and said, greetings favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary. For you have found favor with God. And now 
You will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing, nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Thanks be to God for the reading. Let us sing in adoration to that child away in a manger. Has this not been a wonderful service? Thank you, choir, for leading us on this day, this day after Christmas, this Sunday, um, as we lead into a new season, the post-Christmas season. It is now time for our congregational prayer and the Lord's Prayer. If there are those in the sanctuary who would like a prayer lifted up, please complete a card. And I'm going to ask if those cards can be given to our moderator, Ingrid. 
Wallace, if any prayers from the sanctuary come forth, um, you can take a moment and share those. And I will lift up those who are in the chat. Um, Curtis Evans lifts up those who are ill and isolated. And I am sure each of us know someone whose household has been impacted by this current spread of COVID-19. My household has been impacted, so many others. We thank God that for many, the impact is not as severe as it could be. We're grateful to God that we are able to gather. We're grateful for the safety measures being taken, but we are praying for those who are ill, who are isolated, whether it is COVID or any other illness, we lift up prayers to God for healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Prayers lifted up by Pastor Sarah, the memory and legacy of Archbishop Desmond Tutu, who, was, who passed uh, either yesterday or early this morning. Um, we thank God for his legacy. Uh, it is timely for us to revisit all that Desmond Tutu has taught us down through the years. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers as you receive the spirit of Desmond Tutu. Lift up prayers uh, and good news as Minister Han is sharing with us thanksgiving and prayer for Esther's recent pregnancy, prayers for God's comfort during her morning sickness. Congratulations, Han and Esther and Peggy. We pray God's blessings on this season of, of preparing for the birth of a new baby, for comfort for Esther as she carries your the, the new child of the family. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Foster lifts up prayers for Amanda's brother, Ethan, who has COVID, and to Mama Davis for traveling mercies. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Bethany lifts up prayers for family and friends of Jess Williams as he went to be with God on Christmas morning. We lift up prayers for the family and friends of Jess Williams. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers as you receive Jess's spirit into your arms. Prayers for Amanda, lifted up by her husband Foster as she returns to work next week. Prayers for your entire household. As we know things change when babies are born and things shift and we just pray for peace and pray for guidance as new parents of your beautiful baby, Nova. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Paul Brinkerhoff lifts up prayers for Brother Pete, who had a surgery and he's at home. Um, you're looking to find out more information about his condition. Lord, we pray for Brother Pete. In your mercy, hear our prayers. And Congratulations being lifted up to Han and Esther. Uh, are there any prayers from the sanctuary? No. Thank you. Thank you. I want to share just words of gratitude for the cards and flowers and well wishes and gifts that have been sent my way. Um, in my time of bereavement, you are a loving and caring congregation. And for that, I am indeed grateful. Let us go to God in prayer. God, we thank you that part of the privilege of being called your children is that we have the privilege of prayer to come to you in the name of your son, Jesus, to share our joys and to share our concerns and to seek guidance and to understand your will. And Lord, we are grateful, grateful God, that you indeed hear us when we pray, that we can share testimonies of times when 
you answered clearly and we heard, you heard us and you granted us peace. And so God, in the midst of what seems to be and what surely is a rising of this pandemic, of the spread of COVID-19, God, again, we seek understanding and we seek your will. Lord, in your mercy, grant us peace. God, grant us healing for those who have been impacted, those who are suffering symptoms, those who simply have a positive test and it has caused them angst. God, we pray your peace. We pray for your healing. God, those whose households have been impacted, those whose businesses have been impacted. God, we come to you for you are the one that we know to come to, God. There is no other. And so, Lord, we ask that you grant us healing and you grant us peace, God. We thank you, God, for the joy that has been shared with the good news of birth and the good news of new babies, the good news of the music being shared by our choir, God. We are grateful for the ability to connect, God, for this technology that continues to allow us to go forth and do what you called us to do and to even worship you, God, we say thank you. God, we grant, we ask that you grant peace for any and all who have been traumatized by death and traumatized by violence. God, we pray for your miraculous peace in our spirits. And Lord, together now, we pray the prayer that your son Jesus taught his disciples, and that is us, God, as he taught them to pray together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. The people of God said, Amen. The next reading is Luke, the second chapter, verses one through seven. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, everyone to his own city. <coughs> And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of Nazareth into Judea unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David. He went to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, who was great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. May the Lord bless the reading. Amen. Thank you. 
In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David, a savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was the angel, a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into the heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We are now entering our offering time, our time of giving. As most of you know, there are many ways that you can give for those who are physically in the sanctuary this morning. Ushers will pass around plates in which you can place your offering and your pledge card if you haven't yet turned in that pledge card. There's also ways to give online via our website, you can also text to give by texting give HPUC, all capital letters, to the number 44321. In the spirit of Christmas, in which we receive this amazing, abundant, surprising gift of God's child. We pray that that inspires you and moves you to give a special Christmas gift as you're able. We will be collecting a special Christmas offering this morning. And so if you have something extra that you're able to give at the end of this year, we are grateful. Jesus throughout his ministry shows that gifts can be multiplied, that there is abundance, and that they can go on to do things and plant seeds and grow in ways that we can't even imagine in this moment. And so we pray that this Christmas offering can do exactly that for our church, that it can plant seeds and grow in ways that we can only dream of. As the offering happens, we will sing joy to the world together. Let us sing and let us give.
Will you pray with me? Oh God, we know the wonders of your love. We know the wonders and the blessings and yes, the miracles that you have put in our lives. And so God, we give because we know that wonder and that blessing and that miracle. May all the gifts that are given today help to build up your church, its people, its building, and its ministry. Make us good and faithful stewards. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. A reading from Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 14, on the homage that the baby Jesus receives. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them, when the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were well overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. Now after they had left, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and flee to Egypt, and remain there until I tell you, for Herod is about to search for the child and to destroy him. Then Joseph got up, took the child and his mother by night, and went to Egypt. This is the word of the Lord.
Our final reading comes from the book of John, chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life. And the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light, the true light, which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a parent's only son, full of grace and of truth. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God that is within us, thanks be to God. I want to extend yet again Gratitude and thank you to our choir. Can we give gratitude to our choir? Oh my goodness. Thank you for your ministry to us this morning. And also a thank you, of course, to Elikum, our wonderful <laughs> music minister for bringing this service to us. Elikum, we are so grateful for you. And thank you to all of our readers this morning, Alice and Anna and Han. Thank you especially to India for not only singing this morning, but for setting up all of our technology while Liz is on vacation. Thank you to our ushers, everyone who makes worship possible. Your work is faithful work. Your work is ministry. That's the priesthood of all believers, and we are grateful. A few quick announcements. There's no Bible study until the new year. Um, you can also look in your bulletin for a few other things. Poinsettias, thank you to all who gave poinsettias in memory or in honor of someone. You are invited to either take them home after the service or let our fantastic um, head of the worship committee, Mary Rogel, know what she should do with them. <laughs> so, so please instruct or take home and enjoy. Um, and I will turn it over to Pastor Veronica for a few more pastoral remarks. Thank you. I echo all that Pastor Sarah has said in words of gratitude for this wonderful service on today. Thank you to all who made it happen. I also wanted to just lift up 
um, last Sunday, Lee Cantante had a wonderful concert in our sanctuary. The attendance was great. I think it was greater than they expected. Um, we had it sectioned off so that people, so that there was social distancing and it was a wonderful concert. So congratulations to the return of Lee Cantante in song and to your directress, your director, Delante Fernando. Please share our gratitude with your director. Also, several of us then ventured to the Dance Mary, um, which was just a wonderful performance um, that included our own Liberty and uh, Trinity Bryant. It was a wonderful program, a wonderful dance of the story of Mary and certainly the birth of Jesus. And so last Sunday was a busy Sunday and so many of us packed, uh, participated together and it was wonderful. And so thank you. And so I am realizing that the next time we will see one another will be the new year of 2022. So I pray God's blessings over you and your families as you enter into the new year. Um, my mother used to always say, happy new you. And so I look forward to seeing the happy new you on the first Sunday of 2022. Please watch your emails for worship, the bulletin and any instructions that come with that regarding whether we are remote or in person, please watch your bulletin and watch your, your email for information for next Sunday's worship. And with that, I will pass it back to Pastor Sam. Amen. Emmanuel is with us. God has come into the world. Let us go tell it on the mountain. Join in singing our final song together. Amen. As you go from this place, may you know in your heart and trust that you bear this wonderful light of God, 
that you are a beautiful creation of God, one in which God delights. May you go and tell the good news of Christ's birth everywhere that you go in this Christmas season. Peace be with you. Amen. Amen. Thank you.